There are so many reasons to be fascinated about volcanoes. First of all, of course, it's just the, the sheer beauty. If you are not further away than 200 meters from a gushing lava fountain, uh, well, maybe 500 meters high, without any interruption, and you see that not only for minutes, not only for hours, but for days and days and days, then you really feel the power of nature, and that's just the greatest feeling you can have. But it's not only the sheer beauty, it's also uh, you, you uh, feel the explosion. Every explosion is shaking your whole body. Then you, you smell the sulfur. In every kind, you, uh, you are part of, uh, of uh, the whole thing that you can see. You are watching something that's going on on this planet since uh, more than three and a half billion years. And you have the chance to see that. That's just unbelievable. It's also the feeling to be small. Uh, the feeling to, to be uh, humble, uh, a kind of modesty. And I think that's, that's quite important today especially for uh, many of our politicians. They think that everything is feasible technically. And if you are uh, close to that power of nature, you feel not everything is feasible. I visited volcanoes, of course, all over the world, but uh, maybe my favorite one is the closest, the highest and the most active in Europe. That's uh, a souvenir of that volcano, Mount Etna in Sicily. That's a so-called volcanic bomb. The bomb is something that is as this shape, more or less. It's symmetric, more or less. And as a result of a very strong rotation during the eruption, the liquid uh, lava is uh, turned very, very fast, of course and then it becomes that shape. That's the heaviest material you can have. That's obsidian, that's volcanic glass, very, very heavy. And this comes from the Liparian Island in Italy. That's a, a reminder of uh, Hawaii. You see that kind of lava is very, very flat. You can easily walk on it. And underneath you see the droppings from the liquid lava. My strongest experience I had when I went up to Mount Etna in the night of the 6th to the 7th uh, December 2002. I was sitting uh, close to a house and not further away from a new eruption than 200 meters. And I think nowhere in the world you have that chance to be that close uh, to sit in a veranda and to have uh, free sight to uh, this firing mountain. And I saw uh, gushing lava streams. It was just unbelievable. I felt every shockwave. You felt even the heat. I was so fascinated. I did a lot of pictures, of course. I did a lot of films. In the house, it was pitch cold. It was uh, snow, it was ice in the, in the house. And I was really shocked that at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up, not because of the cold, but because of the heat. It was unbelievably hot. It was smelling uh, of volcanic gas. There was a banging without any interruption from lava slags, from lava bombs from a diameter of that size on the house, on the roof. The whole house was shaking. I went out of uh, the door to, to have a, a better look. And then I saw a red rain. It was a red rain of slags, of uh, lapillis, of uh, lava bombs, 
So there was no way to go one step outside the house. By 11 o'clock in the morning, there was one single window left to escape of that uh, cage. And I had the only choice to get cremated in the house or to go out uh, of this window and to be exposed to this red rain. And I had, oh, uh, frankly said, no big hope to survive. I grabbed my uh, backpack to protect my back a little bit. I ran as fast as I could, but about 20 meters away from the house, I was hit by a boulder from that size about. And I went down, of course, and uh, the backpack was had a uh, hole from that size, a black hole. I did my best to go up again and to run as fast as I ever could. And finally, I was really at my physical end. I just collapsed into the snow, and, but finally I survived. I couldn't believe to survive this, this rain.